Hey everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's on the Tuber. Welcome back. If this is your 10th and final The Crowded Room episode review, hope you're staying doing well. Hope you're staying safe out there in the big girl world. Um, we reached the finale, the final episode of The Crowded Room, the last time we will ever see of this world. And for its final episode, I found it to be uplifting. I found it to be not exactly what I was expecting, but at the same time, I think they did a good job landing the ship, landing at home. Uh, it wasn't a perfect finale. Um, it, 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 uh, there were some aspects I felt like they could have definitely delivered the shock value, but at the end of the day, they, they played it a little bit safe, and but it still had a really good payoff. And um, yeah, it makes, me, it makes this chapter closed. Um, well, not chapter, more like this book to be closed. And I think that's the best thing that this um, show, as rocky as it started out to be, um, to um, be able to do that. And um, it's, it's actually crazy how fast um, eight weeks, seven, no, seven weeks passed by pretty quickly uh, with this story. And overall, this was a, a really good finale. I, I really enjoyed it a lot. And I can't wait. And uh, I especially would hope that people now, that, that the whole show is out, how it would feel in a binging aspect. Um, so to speak. So, uh, with that being said, let's go through the butcher recap and talk about um, the finale for the Crowder Room. Um, so we begin back in the jail cell. It's um, first thing in the morning. Danny is awake. He has not died. Um, um, da, 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 da. Ariana appears, begging um, Danny to stay on to keep alive. You know that you know he needs to like you know stay awake, not fall asleep. For some reason, somehow, Danny did not die over the, overnight. Like, he cut his wrist open, he is bleeding like a motherfucker, and he is still alive. He's still kicking. Um, thankfully, Danny falls on the floor, which caused uh, A, the, um, to be alerted by the guards, and B, also to uh, prevent more blood flow from, like, going out too fast. So that was actually a great move uh, by them. Uh, we cut over back to um, Real Life New York. The lawyer has had a long night of drinking and requires pills for his, um, <coughs> I forgot what he had. It's either for anxiety or PTSD, uh, not PTSD, um, something else. Uh, he is being, he's being rejected on uh, his pill refill because it's been too long and, and he's already passed many refills, you know, the age of like being too addicted and, um, yeah, so he, eventually he starts yelling, starts like making a problem that the, um, the pharmacist decides, okay, I'll give you a few off the top, but that's that's it. I can't I can't give you any more. So that's at least thankful. Uh, but he he then gets a call that um, Danny uh, attempts to kill himself. Uh, she, he he runs into um, he contacts Rye, who is finishing up a meeting with her. Um, I think it was her boss or like someone for uh, the with the dean, uh, letting her know like okay, well the Danny case is basically closed and shut. You know, there's nothing you can do anymore. You're, there's nothing you can gain out of this. So um, you're gonna have to return back to work. No more days off for you. Um, time to you know hit the grind. Go back to working on a whole new grant proposal and uh, resume your quest to try and gain uh, tender. T um, tender, tender. I forget which one it was. Uh, so they're in a rush. They go over to the um, to the prison to go meet um, Danny, who's in the hospital. However, by the time they get there, uh, sadly, Danny is not there. It is Jack. Jack has taken over because now that Danny has caused self harm in himself, it's clear that Danny cannot be the primary um, the primary uh, self anymore. So they have to um, relegate control back to Jack. And this is not exactly what they want, considering the fact that they still have a few more trial, um, a few more court dates to go before they deliver Danny's verdict. And they were kind of hoping for like just a little bit more of a miracle. Um, that wasn't gonna stick. And um, Jack's like deny, like, look, you got y'all try, but you know it just seems like old Danny boy is gonna spend the rest of his life in prison. So uh, you can go work on your next charity case, your next you know grant proposal. You know you, you don't have to bother concern us anymore. Uh, so he basically forces them to leave. They head over to a diner. I oh, don't know. They were drinking the night before, but the, and basically they were trying to like figure out whose fault was it. Was it the mom? Was it them? Like you know, was it the court system? I, they were trying to figure out who do we blame out of this. Someone had to be at fault here. Um, eventually, I think they meet up again the next morning. They're just talking about like you know just how life is and like you know what is their next move now, and um, and apparently. Um, Rai gets a great idea uh, that requires them to drive all the way out back to Danny's um, hometown. Uh, she makes a quick phone call and they have to literally pack up all their food and it's only Rai eating the food. She's just eating in the car seat and just like explaining her plot of like, well, 
while we don't have like Danny's mother, obviously blew their only chance of like proving the abuse allegations, which would have like put some credibility on the multiple personality disorder um, angle they were trying to go for for the jury. They can't do that anymore. Uh, but what they can do is um, find a way to trigger Danny's alternate personalities to come out, so that they could like at least like have a slimmer of hope that Danny could get the insanity plea. So they go over to the to the town. They they uh, meet up with Danny's mother, who gives them, um, they gives them some personal belongings she she had at the house for for a ride to use, and then hopefully this will be uh, useful to uh, assist them in in um, in court. We also have a scene where um, Jack's you know back in the primary control the primary personality chair again, um, because again he's just very concerned that Danny will not is not able minded to like really fend for himself. They lock Danny up away, basically saying that don't worry, we'll we'll, we'll take care of you. You know, as always we do, we will take care of you. Um, I believe after that uh, we get to. I know we get to a, a minor musical um, montage, not like a montage, more like a little bit of like a like a flow of events. Where I know Rye eventually decides to like you know she's forced to like choose between her career at the university or to um, be there for Danny at the very end of his tr tr court, and he cho she chooses Danny, so she gets she uh, she quits her job, so she's able to uh, attend the attend the final trial date, and. You know, they're still a bit shaken. Like, it's still not clear. If it's not, it's not hundred percent that Danny's still gonna win or not. Like, it's like it's a very, it's a freaking gamble right now. Like, this could either break, make or break the case. Um, so yeah, they go in, and not even Jack knows that you know Danny's like you know about to um, go up on the stand. He basically said, "I want to call my final witness, Danny Sullivan." And Jack was like, "Wait, what? This is not what we agreed upon. What did you, what you doing? You're basically committing suicide here for this kid." Um. So, so he goes up to bat and, you know, Jack's like pretending to be Danny, acting like Danny. And uh, eventually the lawyer decides to play the angle of like, okay, well, um, like basically like, it's so weird his, um, the way he approaches this, but basically he's just trying to make Jack like realize that he's not Danny. And like, he's trying to like prove to the court, like the person speaking right now is not Danny, it's Jack. And, um, he's trying his best, like, you know, trying to, like, you know, act like an American, trying to, like, you know, respond like Danny, but eventually he just keeps throwing these, like, hurdles and hurdles and hurdles at him that eventually Danny manages to hear all of this via the beyond because it's annoying him. And the more that Jack answers and that Jack is being very much, like, shortcoming, like, he, she's, you know, eventually the lawyer goes into, Al um, to Alex, I believe it's Alex. Uh, it's either Alex or, uh, I forget what, I forget, um, I forget what, well, Danny's brother, well, Danny's brother, let's say that, um, he's eventually trying to, like, summon Danny out, and then eventually Danny, uh, eventually, um, gets enough strength to break out of his cage, he starts going down within his subconscious, and he finds his younger brother in the water, he pulls him out as soon as, like, the the light that, like, I guess it's a symbolic representation of, like, um, Jack being in control suddenly fades away and it focuses back on Danny, who has found his brother, who has, like, now have has re-emerged from the water. And um, that eventually causes D Danny to become the primary again, eventually allowing him to answer truthfully that, yes, um, I was raped. I was um, sexually molested by my stepdad many times and... I forgot the wording in this scene. I for, I apologize. I just it's been a long night and I had to watch two shows back to back. Um I forgot the exact wording of it, but Danny had to put him away because that was um his childhood in a way and he had to protect it. So he basically buried it in the water so that he didn't have to feel the pain that the uh, that what his stepdad caused to him and um eventually just like seeing that, you know, sudden split and sudden change the jury got to see that actually just like realizing that like, yeah, I am not that person, but at the same time, I am that person. And it actually manages to strike a chord with the, with the jury, with everyone around. Everyone was actually like really engaged with like, you know, this, like, you know, that this was like actually like a breaking moment for Danny that he got to take over uh, once and for all. So um, that ends. And then I believe we cut forward to a couple days later because you know the the prosecutor had no questions for danny they just let they just let him go with that one with that one plea and i want to say eventually we do um 
I want to say that, yeah, I think I think we get one more scene where, like, the personalities are, like, winding down. They're, like, admitting, they're, like, yeah, this is the end for us. Like, you know, it, it just seems like, you know, it's, it's time to call it a curtains. Where, and then finally, we get to a little a little flash forward a couple days later where it's the the verdict day and they deliver that Danny is not guilty based on the insanity plea. So he is safe. He is, you know, now uh well he's not going to prison, but he's still going to a psychiatric institution. But like at least he's not going to like spend fifty years of his life in a cold heart in prison. And for the first time I believe Danny feels happy. He feels so relieved that, you know, he has some semblance of a future that someone out there was looking out for him in his best interest and you know he's looking at rye rye's looking back at him as like you know we did it we done it like you know you're 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 home you're not home free but like you're out of the woods like you know you're you're not gonna be suffering for a crime that technically you didn't commit um because of like you know what you're going through and I can tell, like, I'm pretty sure, like, we didn't get to see the scene in the show, but I'm pretty sure at some point after, like, you know, this little shot between Danny and Rye, that um, they he went to go hug her because, like, you know, it's just, like, the, the amount of work that Rye put into Danny and, like, you know, all the breakthroughs he made just in this couple months alone definitely was, like, was um, definitely the thing that they um, really, really needed um, out of him right now. Um, then we get the a, a uh, flash forward two years later. Um, Danny and Rye are having their first, I guess, well, not Danny anymore, Dan. Uh, I was going to say Dan, Dan, but like, no, Dan. It's kind of weird to say a little bit. Uh, they're having, like, one of their first proper, like, controlled meetings where, like, you know, Dan is now beginning the, the his, um, long road to recovery. He's starting to, um, uh, put the best aspects and all of his personalities into himself, you know, getting rid of Danny who needed these personalities to become Dan, who's like more self-sufficient. Um, Rye, um, is telling him like, yeah, as much as she would have loved to continue to be a psychiatrist to like continue to help him, um, you know, figure out what is next for him. What does he need to do next to like start living a better and healthy life that she wasn't able to. And that, you know, as much as she would love to be working at the clinic that he's in, at the hospital that he's in, working with the therapist, like, it just, it's not, it's not like, you know, it's a conflict of interest and, and also it breaks the confidentiality. So, like, her visiting is, like, the most she can do, but, like, she's very happy that, like, you know, Danny's able to, um, to, um, has accomplished so much in two years, you know, he's, you know, been, he cut his hair, which I'm like, I'm pretty sure Tom Allen was like, thank God. Like, um, because like I heard, um, interview where like Dan or uh, Tom Holland hated the freaking long hair. And I was like, it was just so unkept of him that I'm pretty sure like at some point during like the middle of the show's filming, he was like, can we just find a reason to shave this off? Cause like, it's getting annoying. And I'm like, I have to relate. Like my hair's getting a little long. I actually was growing this out for the show just to like in solidarity with Tom Holland. But I'm like, yeah, after this, um, review, you I'm, I'm i'm getting a haircut i gotta like you know these sides gotta go it's, it's annoying the hell and i'm actually shaving too um because it, it's like i've been doing all this for the show just to like to like you know get uncomfortable but now that the show's over i'm like yeah i'm shaving i'm shaving my shit off um uh, but another crucial breakthrough that happened during these two years is that danny is finally dan is finally ready to like give his mother at least a chance to like repair the all the damage she's kind of done um, she actually has, he actually has her over for a visit. He's talking about the, the hospital, about the opportunities that the hospital is giving him. He, they actually gave him, um, some leeway in the recreational room to do his painting so that he can have this expression of his mind, which it would probably, which is very much needed during his recovery. Um, which all, all of this is like, it's really great. And it, it actually looks like the opening theme of the, of the show, which I'm like, I guess it's like, in a way, this is Danny, like, you know, this was Danny drawing, like, what he was going through in, in the show. Um, they take a walk outside. It's a very beautiful scenery shot. And she's kind of, like, catching him up on the last couple of years in, in her life. She had the balls to leave her um, ex-husband, or now her, now her ex-husband. She moved into an apartment. She lost the house. But, like, now she's, like, more self-sufficient. She's, she may be alone right now, but, like, she's still trying to... Um, figure things out um there's there were a, there were, there was a little difficulty with the ex-husband he was he came over to the apartment drunk sometimes the cops got involved and eventually uh he just stopped going so thankful i was actually pretty bummed we didn't get to see the ex the stepdad one more time i was actually a little bummed i was kind of hoping there was like one more like final showdown scene one more big fuck you scene but like nope you know it wasn't necessary it wasn't necessary but it would have been greatly appreciated um 
Dan hears her out and like, you know, that, you know, she would like to have a chance, you know, to be a mom again that, you know, she failed the last time, you know, letting this, all this happen to Dan, even she even gets more personal revealing that what really happened to his dad, that she was just a teen mom and the dad was not going to be around. He wasn't going to be a proper caregiver for them. So uh, she had to leave uh, him and like be self-sufficient. Uh, but the, the other problem was that she was just hoping that like someone would come and like provide for them that be the, be the caregiver that, you know, they need. And like, you know, she jumped in the, in the, in the arms of the first man that would give her attention. And it honestly was just not what she wanted. And she felt so sorry that all this happened and that, that you know, that she caused very major damage to Dan, to Dan and that, you know, that she failed as a mom and she's hoping that he would give her a chance to like allow her to redeem herself. He didn't say yes or no. He was very silent. Indicating that, like, yes, like, you know, he is open to it, but, like, right now it's just not the, it's, it's, it's just, it was enough to allow her to come in and, like, you know, come back into his life in, like, a semblance of a way, but at the same time it was, like, okay, it was, um, just, like, a one-time thing. It's gonna, it's gonna take, be a longer time before, like, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it takes a recovery and, like, uh, it takes a long time for both mentally, physically, and, like, relationship-wise, so definitely that took a bit of a while, um, yeah, and, you know, Rai also ca catches him up on, his, uh, on her life. You know, she obviously quit the university. Uh, I think she was offered to come back, but she declined. Uh, she managed to use the the victory and, and his case to, like, you know, make what she was researching an official diagnosis. So it's a, it, she's become a much bigger deal in the, in the community. But instead of, like, going to, like, a private practice or anything like that, she's now running... Um, she's now a shrink in her house, like, you know, for people that really need help, similar to Danny. Uh, it allows her to be more at home, allows her to be more closer to her son and like, you know, to be a good mom, to be a good, you know, person to others. And, you know, honestly, it's both what they want. Like they're making the, the best efforts to like, you know, uh, become better in their lives to become much more, you know, um, better people out of it. Uh, but th you know, because at the root of it all, these two were like, you know, at like very different points in their lives that they could definitely need improvement and they're making the improvements. They just showcase that you can work on yourself. It can take as long as it takes, but eventually um, the more hard work you put in, the more better you're going to look like in your um, life in the long run. Um, they eventually sadly do have to part ways. It, it, it's, it's time to say goodbye. Um, they ride, um, Dan walks Rye out, takes her outside to like the front of the hospital, like this like gorgeous landscape shop of like, of the entirety of the uh, uh, the forest, and Dan gets just just to look at this every day, you know, get to see the season change, like you know, actually like living a peaceful life for once, and that you know, as long as you know, in inner peace still takes a long time to achieve. That you know, he is going to um, get there eventually, and it's actually um, really sweet to see. Um, but yeah, so they say goodbye. Uh, Rye looks behind one more time, where she sees Dan in the window. And then while the sun starts coming down, starts setting away, you see um, Alex. I, I could be wrong in the name. I apologize. Uh, Alex, one more time with with Dan with Dan in the window. And then as the sun fully sets, he disappears, indicating that like yes, Dan is still moving on from all of his personalities, but still remembering them in like a way that you know that could honor all of them. And the show ends with um, Dan going back to the recreation room, ready to start painting uh, a new painting. And that was the end of the crowded room. So for me, the ending was like very, again, like I said before, it was very uplifting. It, it, it showcases like, you know, good things happen to good people or like people deserve like one more chance, like an opportunity to like turn things around. Honestly, I thought they were going to go a little bit more dire if they had killed off Danny, but you know what? I think it was better. They, they, did, they did this approach, but I, I'm still a little curious to see how a bad ending would have called it would have been like a larger ramification. And then you start getting to 13 reasons why territory. So I'm like, yeah, we're not going to do that. So I was very happy. They not actually not thinking about it. They actually went with this approach. I actually do like it more, more so than what I was thinking. Um, it was kind of a little bit weird. They were like setting up stuff with the lawyer, like in terms of what his what his um drug addiction, his um post war life. Like I don't know what the purpose with that was, because like yeah, he was a pretty like important character towards the end of the run, but we didn't really like have time to like really like 
um, figure his stuff out. You know, I mean, I'm not sure because again, originally this was an anthology. This is an anthology show, and like I don't think this will get a season two just based on the ratings and based on the reviews. Um, but if they do, I guess they were kind of setting him up. But like that anthology means like you're kind of doing a separate thing. I don't know, really. That was kind of like a weird thing to add in. That this feels like more like stuff that you would have seen in episode seven, eight, or even nine, not something you introduce in the finale randomly. And I guess it was just a showcase that, like, even, like, the lawyers, even, like, the people that are, like, trying to protect you aren't perfect as well. Like, the professionals are not perfect people as well. Like, they, they have their own demons under the skin, so I guess that was what the intention was. But I, I wasn't really 100% certain on that. Um, Rai coming through in the end was, like, you know, it was great, you know, that, you know, she was the one who, like, helped Danny in the beginning, gave him a chance. And now he she was the one, like, really was able to, like, give him, like, the second chance that he need. And it's honestly very sweet that, like, you know, that it, it's this found kinship where like i don't think dan will ever be able to truly forgive his or his mother or call him mom again but i do think in a, in his brain he sees rye as like a surgical a surgical mother that he sees her like this is the mom i wish i had the mom that should have cared about me more and honestly that's a very sweet relation to have it's like something that i'm pretty sure they'll carry out for the rest of their lives you know as long as they both shall live uh so that was actually very sweet to to see them like grow in this kindership, like you know this like fa familiar relationship that isn't like you know family related, which is uh, honestly can be a much deeper bond. Like the more you think about it, so that was very um, sweet for them to approach that with that angle. Um, and you know, seeing the mom again was like okay, it was like you know a little bit of closure, trying to like you know finish out a couple like extra questions the audience probably had. So that was actually very neat. Again, still a little bit bummed we didn't get the stepdad to like come in for like a big final showdown with Dan. Not like a physical showdown, more like an emotional showdown. But like, it wasn't needed. And you know that that that's something like you know when you have negative people in your life, the best you could do is just like walk away and just move on and never associate yourself with them again. I think that's the best way you could um, really approach it. Um, but overall speaking, I think this was a very, very good finale. I think this definitely reached a serviceable ending to this story. Um, the end of a long road for all these characters and you know, that it was just honestly, as much as this was a shaky start, this had a pretty good end and you know, that it's something to like really think about at the end of the day. You never know what really is going on in the mind of someone, whether you think they're they're good or not you never really know so it makes you think secondly about how you treat other people and how you should be reacting towards them don't ever discriminate anyone for their problems don't ever discriminate anyone for any issues they may have personally or privately within them just if you treat yourself if you treat them um well enough if you treat them like an equal human being with kindness and like you know positivity then i think that will just be enough to carry the message for them that like you know life doesn't always have to be dark um, so that being said, I'm giving this finale two thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this week's episode of The Crowded Room. Let me know down below. I'd love to have a conversation with you about the finale. Um, but until then, I think that's going to do it for me tonight. Everyone, so if you're out of way, this has been What's the Two from Action reviewing or have reviewed every episode in the, in the Crowded Room. If you want to do what we're doing normally and What's the Two besides our Crowded Room episode reviews, we're currently doing Nancy Drew episode reviews and also Heels episode reviews each and every week after brand new episodes on their respective platform. But if you don't care about The Crowded Room, you're still in luck. Um, next week, we'll be posting our re series review. Uh, definitive, like, re we're going to review all 10 episodes as a, as a whole show. How did it flow into each other? I have a lot of comments about that. And uh, that will serve as a finale to this review series. So stay tuned until then. But again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Like, favorite, share if you want to. Ring the bell and follow us on social media. But until we see each other again in the future, thank you so much for watching uh, all 10 episodes. If you did, thank you so much for your support. Um, but until down the road, maybe in the future somewhere else, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. And as always, peace out.